Happy Pride Month, everybody. Hi, I'm Drizzle. I use she, they, it, and my favorite, fae pronouns. I'm demisexual, pansexual, non-binary, and transgender. I'm one of those scary transgenders you may have heard about on the news. And I'm very loud and very proud about it. Although, it's come to my attention that maybe I'm not loud enough. Our videos are laced with plenty of talk of intersectional issues, but we don't usually make content that's like the content of the types of left tubers that inspired us to do this. Our videos most often analyze some sort of media and frame it through an intersectional lens of queer identity, BIPOC liberation, neurodivergent and disabled realities, and fairly often the experiences of abuse victims and hopefully recovering abusers. Sometimes, because of the way otherizing works, one might be pressured to only cover one identity cause at a time. Which, as a queer system of color, we've historically struggled with. But, we try our best to speak to as many intersectionalities as it seems appropriate for the situation. And of course, Pride Month and queer liberation is no different. Although, we are a YouTuber and originally sought to be primarily a YouTuber, and a streamer second. For a lot of reasons, it's been quite the opposite, especially in the last year. It seems that even if we hit that sweet spot of balance, we will likely always have it this way. Because of that, the creative culture we reside in is primarily that of the VTuber community. Although we can say that we owe how we approach our craft to creatives such as Thought Slime, Trixie the Golden Witch, or Philosophy Tube, we also have been influenced just as much by folks like Willow, Iron Mouse, Yuma Yamano, or Galgura. Although VTuber and streaming communities at large have a ton of queer voices within them, we've been tremendously frustrated in the space because of the lack of willingness by many to speak to the realities that being queer, or so many other things, brings to life. Oftentimes right now, through struggle. We ourselves make a point to speak to those realities whenever they naturally come up in streams, but also when the current cultural moment, we feel, demands it. We of course don't expect nor want other creators to speak ad nauseum about political issues, but I think the unwillingness to do so by many is just very disheartening. If you're unfamiliar with the VTubing community, to elaborate, on the vast majority of channels you'll find, big or small, there will be a rule for that community to not talk about politics on stream. Very often there's going to be a rule to not have off-topic conversations or talk of non-positive topics. Rules phrased as, keep the chat positive, don't talk about your issues, or don't talk about controversial topics. To their credit, many also have a rule not tolerating bigotry, but much of the bigotry one will find on Twitch is against TOS anyway. We express to our Twitch audience quite often that we do wish to have hard conversations, that we don't mind talking about politics or mental health or identity or trauma in our streams, with the caveat that one does need to respect our limits when we ask them to stop. It's pertinent to mention that for many streamers, having this stance isn't to spite those that are hurting or need to speak into the void, but merely it's there to protect themselves. To express that they are not equipped to handle the harder personal topics or even entertain with certain heavy politics floating in the air. As a matter of fact, many VTubers are marginalized themselves, some of which only finding a living through their art, and they are very aware of how troubling our world is. It's fairly often that one might see a rule that's phrased like, I am not your therapist, speaking to the habit of some viewers to trauma dump, oftentimes without warning. Many VTubers have experienced this, and streamers the world over. VTubers are, especially now, feeling the strain that people like hairdressers felt, and continue to feel I'm sure, to be told things that not even someone's closest family or friends know about them. It can be a lot. but. We've been on that side of things too, even since we've become a VTuber. Confessing our issues to other streamers in a safe space 
that has led to a lot of positive outcomes for us. Which is why we try to be respectful, of course. Which is why VTubers under the mental health tag in particular inspire us so much. We have and will continue to see and offer an ear to closeted and questioning queer folks, disabled folks, plural systems, and those who live in abusive households. We have already come to terms with the fact that a distraction is nice, but when all you have is distractions and nothing else, things can go even more wrong. We are not mental health professionals. We cannot be therapists, but we can offer a fairly safe space to explore questions and to come to terms with the changing realities of our world, especially as it comes to identity and politics. Beyond the beyond that, VTubers avoid political or dark topics because our social media climate is such that one can be harassed and deplatformed for saying something problematic or controversial, even if it is something that the artist believes in their heart to be true, or simply is something that doesn't hurt others. This is even more treacherous for small and or marginalized artists, because it's very easy to get dogpiled. We ourselves fear this. And it very often makes YouTube videos in particular difficult to navigate making. It will be easier to not be brave, to play it safe. But I think we and our content would lose something important. That being said, even though many wish to just entertain and nothing else, I think it's an artist's responsibility in this media landscape, in some cases, to do more than just shut up and dance, as it were. Especially because, whether we like it or not, some people look to us for strength, and artists obviously tend to adore that we bring folks comfort. But that comfort is fragile when one is silent about the injustices that are so widespread right now and honestly have forever been. Facing this heavy burden of responsibility, especially as a small artist, and especially as someone marginalized, and often told either individually or by our society that they don't matter, let alone that they can't be a role model or a leader, is a culture shock to say the least. And I recognize many of us didn't ask for that. But with great power, comes great responsibility. It's a weird mashup to be inspired by overtly political creators and folks who chiefly desire to take your mind off of the problems of the world. Escapism. And we have a foot in both. We don't seek to be only one or the other, but the deafening silence sometimes drives us to be more political in our content than we would otherwise be. But this itself, Pride Month, is one such cultural moment we wish to express ideas about, especially this year. And I think our YouTube audience often misses out on some of the things we say on stream because stuff like that comes up in stream more than it does in our high quality videos, many of which we haven't been posting recently. Right now, I want to talk about the concept of queer and, to a degree, marginalizes folks' bravery. It's exercised to the point of disgust within the queer community and the disabled community that one is strong for living their truth or being open about their truth. It's in feel-good media made by allies and those co-opting allyship for money. And of course, it's something that allies do say so, 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 so often. And it's heartbreaking in a sense because once it's said to you, it feels rude to say, no, you're wrong. I'm not brave or strong. I'm just alive. Within queer realities, it becomes clear in many folks' lived experience that if we're not open or transitioning or advocating for ourselves, then we would be dead. Or wish we were. It's exactly why the trans community pushes so hard against the damaging narrative that transitioning is a choice tantamount to a clothing style or a subculture. 
Something that someone can just put away. Because for many, one day they had to make the decision on whether or not to transition or face the reality that they could die. That they couldn't live with the way that their life was. Stuck in an identity that they did not choose, that was forced upon them and they were told by so many that they just had to live with. And it's why queer folks get so frustrated with well-meaning allies and others who try to convince us back into the closet because they posit that life is easier when you're hiding in the shadows. I promise you, it's not. Our friend, Alma Milkbone, who is a queer and plural artist, and game dev has a profound one-page comic that always hits us to the core of this topic when we look at it. A lot of people call me strong. I get it's supposed to be positive and uplifting, but truth is, I've never felt more weak and afraid in my entire life. I guess my point is, please check up on your strong friends. We never wanted to be strong. We're tired. I used to take for granted that at no point do they say, I am not strong. It's subtle, but the difference in, I've never felt more weak and afraid in my entire life, has done a lot for me to be completely honest. Me who has been through so much that crisis lines such as the Trevor Project or Trans Lifeline no longer benefit me because of the frequency of which we get an operator who is stumped on how to provide any support to us, even the flagrantly ornamental kind. For me, someone who has oftentimes traumatized friends with the stories of our abuse, even when given permission. Someone who even therapists, when we can afford them, struggle to help. Someone whose trauma flashbacks we often white knuckle through so as not to worry everyone around us. Someone for whom being strong doesn't feel like a choice, but a moral imperative. To do otherwise in certain regards has utterly destroyed our relationships. Mine especially. We also never wanted to be strong. At least... Not like this. Not like this. Before coming out, we thought that, like so many others, that being queer, or even disabled, was not something we could live with, let alone survive. So we denied it. The societal forces and bad actors, the ones that are acting even more strongly now, the ones that seek to forcibly detransition trans kids and throw their allies in jail, that seek to hide the knowledge that one can even be queer from people for as long as possible, hoping by the time that they get old enough to actually be able to, that they'll just give up on it being possible or feasible. The forces that seek to alienate queer folks so thoroughly from the rest of the population that a straw man stereotype caricature is how one has to see a queer person. And one which would be so comical that to even express a distant kinship with would draw ridicule. Those forces that imply or downright claim that being queer or becoming queer is to be corrupted. Those forces made us think we couldn't possibly be queer for such a long time. And even then, when we realized we were, on multiple occasions, we buried it, hiding deep, deep in the closet. Every single time, fearing we'd lose family and safety and security if we dared to do more than even slightly suggest we were queer. Hell, even be an ally. And we were right. We lost so much. And what we didn't lose, we lost later because we lacked the skills to cope 
and the strength to believe that we were worth a damn. Not to say that those were the only reasons. There are so often conversations they're had amongst marginalized folks about how we are not brave, we are not strong, we are just here, and we have no other choice. But that's not quite true. To decide that despite the risks, we will live our truth and even be loud about it in order to feel pride and inspire others, that's strength. To tell people, even when they try to gaslight you, that people are doing real harm to our communities, takes bravery. To not go the fuck you got mine route of so many queers with relative privilege when we get the smallest of political gains. To risk the loss of growth as an artist, at least in terms of traction, or an active loss of material wealth with near guaranteed harassment on top of it all to follow your truth publicly or hell just to support others even when our enemies are winning especially when our enemies are winning that's absolute radical bravery even if you don't have a platform and you're just living your truth and pursuing it at your own pace, or if you're biding your time for when you can maximize your safety and live the life that you deserve, if you're staying in the closet for the safety of loved ones, or deciding to stay hidden but act as an ally at great personal risk, that's not only a choice that's some of the bravest radical shit I know so this pride month and beyond know that just by not passively letting injustice stand even in your everyday life or by providing assistance from the sidelines you are doing something and you are making a brave choice Though I do wish that you didn't have to, that we didn't need more people in our community making those choices. Because if no one stands up, then we all lose. If you do happen to be fortunate enough to have a platform, please use it. Even if you can't afford to do charity events right now, even if you have to push so hard just to keep a roof over your head. Make your audience know who you stand with and who you stand against. Do not leave a place for bigots to run rampant in your communities, any of our communities. Stand with reproductive rights. Stand with trans rights, with queer rights. Stand with black and POC lives. Stand with women. Stand with the working class. And if you are just scraping by, survive. And do your radical best. And know that you are not alone. Happy, resilient pride. This has been Drizzle Bright. Drizzle Bite. <laughs> Your life will be filled with happiness and sadness. And you deserve a lot more of the former. Hey everybody. I'm Punkbite. I use she and they pronouns. I just want to say thank you for making it to the end of the video. And you are valid. A happy pride.
Uh, I want to say thank you to our patrons that continue to support us even when we didn't post anything to the Patreon uh, in May. R2 Walker, Nova System, Void Walker System, and Valued Customer. If you got something out of our work, this video or anything else, we'd really appreciate you supporting us. You could join our Patreon, which starts at $3, but even just sharing this video would be nice. Of course, the like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff, right? But if you're trying to support queer artists this month, other than us, we will be putting other folks' social media stuff in the about. Um, including any artists whose games we may have used screenshots of or clips from during this video. We can't be sure that every single artist is queer, but all of the stuff we use in this video reflects queer realities. Stuff from the amazing trans anime Wandering Sun to various, some even just in production, queer games. It's gonna be hard going forward, and there's no way around that. Please stay safe as you can. And please remember that you are valuable. We do all that we can here. Good morning. Or perhaps, good evening.